scientific societies are as yet in their infancy. It is to be expected that advances in physiology and psychology will give governments much more control over individual mentality than they now have, even in totalitarian countries. Fitch laid it down that education should aim at destroying free will, so that, after pupils have left school, they shall be incapable, throughout the rest of their lives, of thinking or acting otherwise than as their schoolmasters would have wished. Diet, injections, and injunctions will combine from a very early age to produce the sort of character and the sort of beliefs that the authorities consider desirable. And any serious criticism of the powers that be will become psychologically impossible. Bertrand Russell, 1953. After two world wars, the progressives welcomed these new international organizations, but they argued that they had democracy issues and therefore were inadequate not only to prevent another global war, but also to foster global justice. Activists around the globe formed a world federalist movement bent on creating a real new world order. In the 1940s, British writer and futurist H.G. Wells would go further by appropriating and defining the term New World Order as a synonym for the establishment of a scientifically managed world state and socialist economy. Doublespeak George Orwell, 1984 Animal Farm Huxley's Brave New World That's the New World Order Double speak. Socialism, communism, fascism. Take away your liberty, take away your rights. Plan. It's like a game of chess. You position your pieces, and when the timing is right, you strike. Be aware, they're going to strike. They've already started, long ago. American writer Mary M. Davison, in her 1966 booklet, The Profound Revolution, traced the alleged New World Order conspiracy to the creation of the U.S. Federal Reserve System in 1913. This is absolutely true. 
The Federal Reserve was ratified by only three members of Congress in a closed session. What is even more disturbing is the bill was not ratified by all the states, yet passed into law. The floodgates swung open. The central bank, known as the Federal Reserve, loans money to the United States government at interest, then puts the money into circulation. So every dollar we earn, every dollar we spend, has interest on it before we spend it. Mary Davison's 1966 booklet also revealed that the Council of Foreign Relations, created in 1921, was a front shadow government for the New World Order. In this film, you will learn about the inner workings of the true shadow government that holds the power in this country. There are no Democrats. There are no Republicans. There is no difference. There is only division. And this is by design. It's an illusion for the people. The Bilderberg Group, David Rockefeller, the Ford Foundation, and others finance the campaigns to push forth their global agenda for world domination. A North American Union is proposed. This would end the United States sovereignty as a nation, take away our freedoms. This must not happen. The goal of this film is to raise awareness if we don't act, tyranny will surely reign. George Orwell wrote in the book 1984, written in 1948, I quote, The party seeks power entirely for its own sake. We are not interested in the good of others. We are interested solely in power, not wealth, nor luxury, nor life, or happiness, only power, pure power. Power is not a means, it is an end. One does not establish a dictatorship in order to safeguard a revolution. One makes the revolution in order to establish the dictatorship. If you want a picture of the future, imagine, imagine a boot, a boot stamping, stamping on a on human, human face, face forever. forever. In 1939, H.G. Wells published A New World Order. Here is a quote. Directly, we grasp this not very obscure truth that there can be and are different sorts of money dependent on the economic usages or system in operation, which are not really interchangeable, then it becomes plain that a collectivist world order, whose fundamental law is such a declaration of rights as we have sketched, will have to carry on its main primary operations, at least, with a new world money, a specially contrived money, differing in its nature from any sort of money conventions that have hereto served human needs. It will be issued against the total purchasable output of the community in return for the workers' services to the community. The Obama administration proposes mandatory service of all citizens under the guise of giving back to the community. The service has fallen almost exclusively onto the backs of our military. And that's why I won't just ask for your vote as a candidate. I will ask for your service as a citizenship of the President of the United States. Citizenship is not an entitlement program. It comes responsibility. A young person joining our military must know that we will only send them into harm's way when we absolutely must. We need to ease the burden on our troops while meeting the challenges of the 21st century. 
to say, give me somebody before at age seven, I can turn them into anything I want. So that's why there's this push, push, push. Get the kids into the school system. Get them to not follow evidence. Get them to only do as they're told. Get them to be little robots. Get them to think it's normal to march up in lines and like, like little soldiers and so forth. And then later in life, they'll make another difference. The word mandatory is just another way of saying ordered. I order you to give back to the community. We Americans, in many ways, consistently give back to the community. However, it is by choice. Mandating it, once again, strips away liberty. Our government, who works for us, by us, and of us, we the people, are once again being mandated and manipulated by our corrupt government. Desensitizing us by a slow, crafty, incremental dissolution of our basic rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, the right to bear arms and hold property. These rights are slowly being eroded, but it's an insidious erosion because it's done incrementally without notice, one by one, little by little. The mandatory service proposed by the Obama administration is for all citizens 18 to 65, but of course it is geared towards the vibrant, impressionable, easily manipulated youth of this country, our children. Also in 1939, H.G. Wells wrote The Fate of Man, and I quote, This world youth movement claims to represent and affect the politico-social activities of a grand total of 40 million adherents under the age of 30. It may play an important and increasing role in the consolidation of a new world order. In the foreword to the 1946 edition of Brave New World, Aldous Huxley wrote, A really efficient totalitarian state would be one in which the all-powerful executive of political bosses and their army of managers control a population of slaves who do not have to be coerced because they love their servitude. To make them love it is the task assigned. In present-day totalitarian states, to ministries of propaganda, newspaper editors and school teachers, the greatest triumphs of propaganda have been accomplished, not by doing something, but by refraining from doing. Great is truth, but still greater from a practical point of view, is silence about truth.